Um, you're here with Robin. And Amanda. And we're here to introduce our new um, podcast series that we're doing. The Ultimate Power Rangers Marathon Podcast. Woo! You might have noticed that um, throughout Twitter on our Saturdays, we'll use the hashtag UPRM, standing for Ultimate Power Ranger Marathon. Um, this is something we started back in September. We started watching um, Power RPM. Rangers RPM. Um, that was the season Robin thought she could hook me on the best, and, and she was, I was right. right. She was very right. I was very hooked. And then we went to Jungle Fury, because that's Robin's favorite seasons. Not because it's the best season Power Rangers, but yeah, other reasons. Yeah, other reasons. <laughs> other reasons. Um, which is actually funny, because Jungle Fury is the one right before RPM, so we just went backwards. And then we decided... Why not start from the very beginning and go forward that way? So that way we know all of the Power Rangers myths and everything. Because there's some things we could tell we were missing by not. I mean, you were missing. I was definitely missing because I've never seen Power Rangers before. As a kid, I had an older brother who didn't like Power Rangers very much. And my parents didn't want us watching it very much because, you know, brother who was very influenced by violence on television. Yeah, probably me too. Let's be fair. I probably would have attempted some of those stunts in real life. I had two older sisters um, who loved Power Rangers. Yeah, no. Um, though they only really watched Mighty Morphin. Anything after that, they were like, "Okay, we're done." They they were older than they were done with it. Mm. Um, I was not. <laughs> um, and then I watched it every once in a while. Like I didn't watch full seasons, but like. I definitely remember watching Wild Force every morning on Jet X. Mm, mm-hmm. I knew Power Rangers was a thing. I've seen the toys. No idea what the plot line of the show was. Knew nothing about it. I was too busy watching Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. And, you know, all those kids' WB shows. I watched those, too. But I also watched Power Rangers. Yeah, no, it was all about the kids' WB, cart- the uh, Tsunami. That's, that's where I really stayed in. Okay. Disney Channel. Fair enough. Um, it aired in 1993, like... A week after I was born. August 28th, 1993 was the first air date. Mm-hmm. It's a week after I... That's not, 11 days after I was born. I'm 11 days older <laughs> than Power Rangers. Very proud of those 11 days, too. Yeah. I'm just very proud of that. Yeah. So, the Super Sentai is the franchise that um, Power Rangers is based off of. Um, it's a Japanese kind of superhero show. Five superheroes. Five to six superheroes in colorful spandex. I actually haven't seen any Sentai. I've only seen what pops up occasionally on my Tumblr with Dash. I want to watch it, but there's a lot of it. There's a lot. There's, there's 40. There's 40 seasons of Sentai. This specific season um, that it's based off of is um, it's actually like the 16th Sentai series that they had. Yeah. Huh. Um, and the real question is where will we find it to watch? I mean, you can find it. We can find we will we we'll be, find it. We'll find it. It's just it's not as easy as Netflix. It's not all on Netflix. <laughs> you yeah. can't the next one on Netflix. Just next. Are you still watching? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So what the ad- adaptation means is they use part of the show, the Japanese footage, and incorporate it with a new plot. Mm-hmm. So they use the fight scenes. Where they're all in the superhero costumes. Yes, that's why you'll notice discrepancies with gender sometimes, height differences, size differences, mm-hmm. just because it's they're using the Japanese footage. And then the Zord fights, which um, the Zords are the giant robots that yeah. Power Rangers have that comes with the suits usually and powers. Well, like, yeah, ish. explain it a little more. Um, the monsters specifically, and. In um, Mighty Morphin, the villains, mm-hmm. Rita is Rita and her f- group groupies. That's not the right term. Her lackeys, minions. Her minions, yeah, are um, they're all uh, the Sentai footage, and they're just dubbed. Mm-hmm. Although later they do get uh, they change they, they Rita. change the Rita, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so what comes in Power Rangers is. Each um, member of the rangers are color coordinated. So you have the green ranger, or the red ranger, the pink ranger. Yellow, blue, black were the originals. And then we have a green ranger was added in later. Mm-hmm. As a sixth ranger. So you'll have, typically, and this will get 
messed with in a in later seasons. But you have your main five, and then a sixth ranger comes in later. Is introduced. Later. Ha- it it depends. Sometimes halfway through the season. Sometimes with the, it's in the first five episodes. It just depends. Mm-hmm. It changes every time. So you have your color. You have your weapons. Sometimes they're the same weapons. Like mm-hmm. I know, a lot of times they all have blasters. Yes, some form of blaster. Usually, Red Ranger seems to have like a sword. Or st- yeah, because that's kind of like the leader weapon. And yeah, I'm gonna have a sword. In some seasons, they'll all have the same weapon. Like in um, Lost Galaxy, they all have the sword. Yes. Um. Some seasons, they'll all have like a blaster and then another weapon that's specific to them. Mm-hmm. But in the first few seasons, they have just a specific weapon to them. Um, and they all combine to make a mega weapon. Yes, that they can use. And then they also have what we alluded to beginning, um, the Zords. They're these, um, they're yeah. big robots. Yeah, that's the best way to describe it, giant robots. They can be animals, they can be mystical creatures, they can be prehistoric creatures, they can be cars. They're really anything, what the Japanese Sentai decided to be, that's what the Americans, uh, whatever companies currently owning the Power Ranger franchise, they use that footage, and that's basically what you get. Yeah. Sometimes they make great sense with the season. Other times you'll go, why Why do we have these words with this season? S- sometimes yeah. they decided to write that season before they got the Zord yeah. footage. And it doesn't fit. But anyways, um, we talked about this earlier, but um, I guess we'll talk about it now. Um, Power Rangers does have an interesting air history. They, um, they get... They get bought by a lot of different companies. The rights get bought and sold constantly, it seems. Not really Not constantly, constantly. But several times this is happening. But they get shifted from network to network. Yes. From channel to channel. So they started on um, Fox Kids mm-hmm. in the morning. Um, so they're owned by Saban. They have the re- the writing, the television deal with um, Fox. Um, so that's what it's going to be for these next few seasons. Is owned by Saban and... Aired by Fox. Aired by Fox. Okay. So now we're going to introduce you to the season one of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So Um, in season one, you have Rita. She was trapped in a trash can and got released on the moon. On the moon, it is on the moon, and she gets released by NASA. 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 That's right. NASA. Their way of using NASA, but not being NASA. Thanks, NASA. Yes. So they basically these two astronauts were on the moon. They saw this odd-looking trash can. Or a container, really. They yeah. just thought it was like a container thing. They didn't know what it was, so they decided, let's just open this. Yeah. Why they thought that was a good idea. And yeah. so, once Rita got freed, she decided she was going to destroy whatever planet she saw first, and that just so happened to be Earth. Pretty much. Um, so then Zordon, who is on Earth, he's mm-hmm. this big floaty space. Is he on Earth on the moon? No, he's on Earth. I always swore it was on the moon. I swore the command hey. was on the moon. Ayo! I just wanted to do it on recording. Uh, that's how she just came in. Yep. We're talking about Power Rangers. I know. Yeah. I'm aware. Yeah. I swear the command center is on no. the moon also. No. It is. It's all. The command center is always in the same place. It has been since it's been there. Okay. Anyways. So Zordon and Alpha. Alpha is his robot with an annoying voice. Very annoying voice. It. You think it's annoying in season one. It gets worse. It does get worse. It's worse. So, your main villains are Rita, Goldar is one of her minions, and yeah, she has what we call the Putty Patrol, are her little fighting minions. They're um, basically cannon fodder. That's the best way to describe them. Yeah, they're just there to be annoying. Any of the minions that the that aren't specifically a monster or a... Uh, a general. I'll, let's call Goldar a general. Yeah. He's like, he's fairly strong. So, um, along with the characters, our main five um, Power Rangers are Kimberly, she's the Pink Ranger, Jason, the Red Ranger. The Red Ranger is pretty much always the leader. Mm hmm. Um, Billy is Blue Ranger, Zach is the Black Ranger, and Trini is the Yellow Ranger. And yes, we know the Black Ranger is black. The Asian the Ranger. Ranger is yellow. They swear they did that by accident. They swear they didn't realize it until like five episodes in that they did that. In fact, um, Trini was uh, originally a white actress, but um, 
something happened with her contract or I don't really really remember and so then they hired the actress that they have so yeah what else is important about this season specifically the power coins so their ability to morph comes from these power coins given um, to them by Zordon he didn't make them he just has them Yes, they were given to him by somebody else who we find out in the later season. In, like, season three, we find out who actually made them. Um, So it grants them their power to morph um, and call on the Zords. I know you only think there are five, and we're led to believe that there are only five. But that was a lie. There's actually six. There's six. Rita has a six coin, and that's really the main plot that happens in season one, is the six ranger who's the green ranger. Mm Mm-hmm. Out of 60 episodes, I want to say around 12 are plot-based. Mm-hmm. Um, so season one has 60 episodes. They're mainly fillers. Fillers can be nice. We say fillers because they start out with a base of, like, here's the situation of life. Life is going on for these kids. Rita comp- sends a monster of the week to attack, disrupts this life. They fend off the monster, and then life goes back to the way it was. Nothing's really changed. Nothing's progressed with, like, dealing with Rita, the situation. There's no change in their life, really. And that's something to note about the first few seasons of Power Rangers. They're not active trying to get rid of and defeat the main villain. They're very reactive to Rita. They just react to whatever new monster they send to them. They never are proactive in trying to kill her or put her in jail or put her back in the dumpster or anything. Mm -hmm. They just react to whatever she sends. Despite the fact that Rita's doing a lot of damage to their city and hurting a lot of people, they kind of don't ever do anything about it. They just... I guess I'm just hoping that Rita goes away. I don't know. It never was really clear of why the... It really isn't. And so... And Rita doesn't even seem to have a plan either. No, it becomes really of, hmm, how can I annoy the Power Rangers this time? Or how can I mess up this special event for them? It's not. It stops being destroying the Earth and just, let me mess with these Power Rangers. Yeah. Um, so, the main arc of it does come down to this one, the sixth Power Coin. Um, in the first... And so, that's what we um, call the Green Ranger arc. Um, it's a five episode arc um, starting with it's um, green with evil Mm -hmm. the first part um, introduces Tommy he's a really nice kid he's wearing a green shirt he's wearing a green shirt (laughs) uh, him and um, Jason are both going to compete in a martial arts tournament Mm -hmm. I believe and Tommy is actually at the same level of martial arts skills as Jason the red ranger Um, Then Tommy gets kidnapped, and Rita uses her magic to transform him into the Green Ranger, who is under her command. It should be noted that Rita has magic. That's why she she's very mystical, and so she has a magic wand, and she's very mystical with it. Which is why we don't like the new Power Ranger Rita design. Yeah, no, it's not mystical. It's It's insectoid. That's not a word. <laughs> it's not a word. Robin. But it fits. <laughs> it does fit, but it's not a word. Anyways. Um, so another thing that happens in the first episode is Tommy is able to infiltrate the command center, which is the home base for all the Power Rangers. Only a Power Ranger can enter it, which is why Rita needed her own evil Power Ranger. Because mm-hmm. it's not like Zordon had an evil <laughs> detecting a uh, force field. No, just a power ranger detecting force field. Yep. You'd think Zordon would be like, hmm, I only have five of the power ranger co- power coins. I might not let just any power ranger come in. Yeah. Anyways, he blows up the command center. Mm-hmm. So, um, episode two, Jason is kidnapped by Goldar while, um, the rest of the Power Rangers fight Tommy. No, Tommy kidnaps Jason. And then Tommy goes to go fight the rest of the Power Rangers while Jason fights Goldar. Yeah, Jason is kidnapped. Yes, but he not fights by Goldar. Goldar. You said he he's fight- kidnapped by Goldar. Oh, whatever. He fights Goldar. Yes, that's really the point, is that they're separated now and they have to fight. Yeah. That's that's episode two. That's basically... That's the point of episode two. 
point, episode three, Jason's not fighting both Goldor and Tommy. But until he's saved by he, the Power Rangers. Billy's able to transport him out because, you know, Billy's a tech genius. Um, we introduce a new um, general, Scorpina. Though we don't really see a lot of her outside this Green Ranger arc. Nope. Me and and I- so then Rita creates a plan to get rid of the Zords. So that's really the big, is that in, in this arc, Rita gets rid of the Zords, at least temporarily. Yeah. So episode two, or episode four, um, Goldar is made big. Mm-hmm. Um, which is something these monsters can do when they're, like, destroyed. They get grown big again. So that's why we need the Zords to fight them. Yes. That's why we need our big Ultimus Prime. Um, then we get the identity of the Green Ranger. That's another, that's kind of the important part. Yes. Um... But the Green Ranger, Scorpina, and Gordon, Goldar all grow big and they destroy all the Zords. Do they destroy them or just weaken them? Destroy them. them. Okay, destroy the destroyed. Megazord because the Zords have all grown to one giant Zord, the Megazord, mm-hmm. the Optimus Prime and all that. And so they destroy that and the Zords are kind of just lying in heaps and they're basically destroyed. Okay. And then episode five, Tommy is good again. We introduce his Dragon Zord. Mm-hmm. Um, and that manages to save the Zords, build up time that they can recover, and they come back. And now we have all the Zords. Yay! Yay! And so that was episode 17. Yep. So we have like 16 episodes of filler before we introduce the gold, the Green Ranger. Mm-hmm. Then we get... Lots of filler. A lot Lots more filler. filler. Um, there is a two-part episode. Oh, that's also filler. Of I was it's it's also filler. It's just a two-part filler. Um, and then, with episode 34, we get The Green Candle, part one and two. What this is, is um, Rita, angry that she lost the Green Power, the Green Power Ranger, um, she creates this candle that is tied to his power point and his, um, the power life force of the Power Ranger. Not Tommy's, but, like, the power that fuels the Power Ranger. Mm-hmm. Um, so she starts to, she lights it, and it comes down to it. Jason fails to save him. Jason fails to save him, to save Tommy. Um. So now he has a limited amount of power. He has been informed not to morph. Yes. Because he only has so much morphing ability left, he shouldn't morph very often. So, the next important part is 49, another two-parter. Um, this is Return of an Old Friend. Um, it happens on Parents' Day. Woo! That's that's the event. Um, the Power Rangers family is kidnapped by Rita. And Tommy uses the green power coin yes. to morph again and save them. And, and ultimately he decides to continue being the Green Ranger because he's needed. Yes. Until but the power coin runs out. That's knowing basically. he'll never be able to be a Power Ranger again. Mm-hmm. And that's basically all the plot that happened in Season 1. And that gets finished in Season 2. Yes. Interestingly enough, the season finale of Season 1 is also filler. It really, it had no sum up. You you watch and you're like, this is a season finale episode? It's not. It's, it's a not. filler. It's, it's filler. It's really filler. And this is why it's sometimes hard to be distinguish season one, two, and three. Because they're not in any season finale until you get season three. That has a season finale. And, yeah, season two didn't have much finale. No. Um, but one of the great things about these first few seasons is you get so much character development. You have these one episode... You have episodes that are de- dedicated strictly to this character. Like, episode two is about Trini overcoming her fear of heights. Mm-hmm. Um, you have various episodes where they introduce um, new as- facets of each character's personality, their family life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we really get to know these characters very well. And that's why they come become very dear to us, because we know them so well. Yes. They're just not just Power Rangers. We actually know them as teenagers, as normal kids. And so they're a little bit more relatable. I think the original Power Rangers are a lot more relatable than some of the later ones. Just stop being relatable. I mean, we know that Kimberly wants to be a gymnast when she grows up. Mm-hmm. Um, we watch her practice every episode. We yeah. um, watch Jason and Tommy spar every week. 
Um, we watched Billy f- fidget and create um, technology mm-hmm. that ends up helping them. Uh, we watched Zach dance. Yep. And I think two characters we've neglected to talk about, which is a real shame, is Bulk and Skull. They're really what kind of tie season one, two, and three together, and four and five, really. Um, Bulk and Skull start out as these bullies in season one. Um, and they have some really great growth throughout their appearances in Power Rangers. Um, they're really they're, comic relief. They're the comedy. Show. comedy. They are hilarious. You will admit, you watch them and you just go, oh gosh, but they're then you're your, laughing also. They're your classic time. slapstick humor. Yep. Um, they get pies to the face regularly. Um, Falling on their faces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, soon there are kind of, in the next few seasons, they're trying to find out who the Power Rangers are. Mm-hmm. Is something um, that will continue. I believe that's specifically season two. I think so. Mm-hmm. All right, um, so let's talk about our favorite episode from season one. Okay, my favorite episode is the Trick or Treat episode. It's the Halloween one. It's one of the Halloween ones. It's there one are of the two Halloween, ones. Halloween episodes in season one. That is true. That just shows you how many episodes there are. Yeah, so let's see. For if there's year. 52 weeks in a year, 60 episodes? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Got two Halloween episodes out of it. Really, my favorite part about this episode is Bulk and Skull. Uh, Skull is. And Kimberly are on a game show, and Kimberly is the one who's winning it. She's there. It's about to be like it's a riddle or something, and you have to ask, come up with something that the host cannot guess what it is, right? Okay. Wasn't that it, or was it the other way? It's a game show, and Kimberly is winning until she gets called to be a Power Ranger, and she wanted to win this new car, and so she has to leave, and so Skull gets it automatically because Kimberly left, and then. Later, because Skull cheated, you see him lose the car also. And it's just a great moment. All The entire game show is just hilarious. That's also one of my favorite episodes, but not because of the game show. It's because of the monster. Ugh. Amanda hates this monster. I do hate this monster. I love this monster. It's the um, Rapping Pumpkin. Yes, you heard her correctly. Rapping Pumpkin. He distracts people with his sick rhymes. Yeah, no. It was so 90s, and I was just cringing the entire time. Cringe. That's the point. It's so 90s. (laughs) Yes. The 90s should stay in the 90s. Oh, boo you. (laughs) But yeah, so that's my favorite episode. No, that was my favorite episode. It's also mine. Oh, I thought you you liked the uh, Power Rangers punks. Oh, yeah. I do like that one, too. Basically, um, Rita casts a spell on Billy and Kimberly, and they turn, I don't want to say evil, but they no, they turn 90s equivalent of evil. Yep. <laughs> they're wearing leather jackets, and, they're, and their hair is, like, all done up and spiky and, like, black lipstick, and, yeah, and they become bullies. Yep. But that just, that, that image of Kimberly and Billy as these, like, bully punks is just the best. So usually we'd also do now the least favorite episode, but because we skipped so many of the fillers, it's kind of hard to do. So we're just going to skip that for both this season and season two. Yeah. We just skipped too many episodes when we were going straight through. Yeah. We have gone back and seen some of the fillers on our own time, but when we were watching it as a marathon, we skipped a lot of them. Yeah. Um. So now... Because it's the 90s, and we are both of the female persuasion, <laughs> we have the Dream Boat Award to Woo! hand out to our most attractive Power Rangers of each season, mm-hmm. but you can only get it once. And that's really important for these few seasons where the cast doesn't switch out as regularly as later seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a male and female award. Yeah. So this... The male award goes to Tommy, obviously. Very obvious. He... Everyone yeah. likes Tommy. I've, I've not met a person who's... Except for Lauren. <laughs> I was going to say, Lauren hates the uh, stereotypical white boy look, for the most part. Um, yeah. I mean, when you think Power Rangers, there's one name that is quintessentially linked with Power Rangers. That's Jason David Frank. 
mm-hmm. who plays Tommy. Yep. Not only is he in the first four and a half seasons, mm-hmm. he also comes back in another season as a mentor. Yep. He is the name most associated with Power Rangers. And as a girl in the 90s, he was also my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of other young girls' boyfriends, too. Yep. So our female award is Kimberly, because I love Kimberly. Because she's so beautiful. And she's, she's adorable. So I love her. Um, I think these are very obvious ones. Yeah. And, I mean, the only other girl is Trina, and I love Trina, too. Mm-hmm. Um, she's great. She is a great... She's a sweetie, too. But let's just say my favorite color was pink growing up, just so I could be the pink ranger. <laughs> Which will lead us into our next, our top ship. Now, the ship can be multiple seasons. We are allowing this just because our top ship, our top, yeah, it doesn't is Tommy and Kim. Shocker. Yep. That that was the reason I wanted to be the Pink Ranger so I could be Kimberly and so I could be with Tommy. I love you, Robin. So I much. love you too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not the only one who thinks that. No. I could call like four people on my phone list and they'd be like Tommy Green Power and they'd be like ooh he's hot um so that concludes our discussion of season one um we're also gonna include season two in this because they're just they're similar they're very similar they're both it's another 60 episode season it's another one a lot of it was filler we do have some new cast come in and uh, new Power Rangers come in but they basically fill the same role. They are almost the same character, mm-hmm. just with a different face. And so season two of Mighty Morphin is pretty much the same. We um, start the season introducing a new villain. Lord he doesn't Zed. replace Rita. His uh, It's Lord Zed. He does it first because she, he uh, puts he, her back in the dumpster and she's gone for a while. Mm-hmm. So at first he, is, he replaces Rita, but then Rita will come back. And they get married. Season two, I really feel, is very much a continuation of season one. It's just now we have some new characters. Yeah. New new Power Rangers and new villains. And we have new Zords come in in this season. It's really a continuation of building on what yeah. happened in season one. It's not... I really don't feel it's its own season. It's not. It's not. I, quick correction, there's 52 episodes in this season, not 60 like I originally thought. That's still a lot. This, that's still a lot more than There's the still 40. one episode for every week yep. of the year. Yeah. That's too much. Yeah. Um, so, some other new characters we have this season are Aisha, Rocky, and Adam. We'll, inter- we'll talk more about them in a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Um, so, this season opens up with a three-part episode, The Mutiny. Um, this is where it introduces Lord Zed as the new villain. Um, it's actually the first time we get our own, our American actress for Rita Repulsa. Yeah, they had a whole, like, she did a makeover thing, so that way they could put a new actress there, and I thought that was really cool. That was a good idea, yeah. She regenerated. Thank you. Thank you, pal. You're welcome. Um, we also get this new, um, arc for um, Bulk and Skull. Mm-hmm. They're no longer really bullies, but they're... Um, they are still kind of They're bullies. still kind of They mean. still pick on the Power Rangers, not really since it's the Power Rangers. Yeah. But now they're trying to figure out who the Power Rangers are. And that's their big identity. Mm-hmm. It's actually... There is a good episode in the season. I don't think we watched it, but it is one of my favorites growing up. Um, we'll talk about it at the end. Okay. Um, so, again... So we start the season... Um, Tommy's, Tommy's lost the green power. No, he hasn't lost he it yet. He hasn't lost it yet. Oh, yeah, he does lose he, it in this. He loses it pretty soon after the season two starts because he's, he's still being the Green Ranger, and so he's draining himself of all the Green Ranger power, and so eventually we have the Green Ranger is no more. It's a two-part episode where he finally exhausts the green power coin. And he can no longer morph, and... It's really nice that the next episode after that is you see Jason be really depressed about this because he feels like he failed Tommy. And Tommy's disappeared right after the, he can no longer be the Green Ranger. And you really just sense this emotional connection. He's still in high school. How can he just, like, disappear? Yeah. You know, I could get there in high school. I could get there in high school. Despite the fact that, like, half the episodes take place in high school, 
I forget they're high schoolers because every what episode high... starts with them in the hallway. But the, they never did the normal high school stuff. Occasionally, they have like a party to plan for or like some event. But they're never doing homework. They're never studying for exams except hey, for Billy. Except in for episode me. like two of season one, Kimberly and um, Trini are gathering signatures to save to get rid of a dump plant. So they're at in, they're doing the school and whatever. Um, um, yeah, and so you have directly the app because Jason was charged with putting getting the green candle in season one and mm-hmm. putting it out, but he didn't. He failed. He failed. Goldar kicked his butt. Yeah, he stalled him for just long enough. By the time Tommy got there, the candle extinguished. Mm-hmm. Which was a kind of a good moment because it sent the message that you can fail. There's Failing like, happens. Yep, it happens in life. So that is, um, so then we get two episodes in between this, and then we come to the two-part white light. There are a lot of two parts in this season. Mm-hmm. Um, not all of them mattered. matter, shockingly enough. You'd think if, like, it was a two-parter, that means, oh, plot points. No, not at all. No. So no. that's just long fillers. Just long fillers. Um, so the two-part white light is important. Um, it introduces the White Ranger. Yes. Um, and lo and behold, the White Ranger is Tommy. It's Tommy. Oh, shocker. Yep, shocker. I think, wasn't it originally not going to be Tommy? I have no idea. Or something? I don't know. Who knows? Hmm. But White Ranger comes with a brand new sword. He now has the White Tiger Zord. You know what also he has? A talking sword! Why does he have a talking sword? I do not understand this. This is literally the only weapon that ever, ever talks. The Zord also talks. I do not understand this. Why does it talk? Why does it speak English? It bothers me so much. So much. It's the only one that does it. If they later did a season where more Zords could talk, I could accept this better. But no, you look it up, this is the only time a Zord ever talks. The only time a weapon talks. Why does the weapon talk either? <laughs> it has a tiger head. And the tiger head talks. I don't understand. I don't know what to say, Amanda. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that... I'm sorry that in 1994, they decided to have a talking sword. <sighs> but now that you think about it, it was 1994. That is so something someone in 1994 would do. I don't know. I wasn't born then, so you know I don't have the. I was. Anymore. I'm two weeks older than Power Rangers. <laughs> Eleven days. Eleven days. And she's still proud of this fact. That oh, has okay. not changed. Yeah. All right. Moving on from the White Ranger and the ridiculousness of a talking sword. Then we get another pointless three-part episode this time. The Ninja Encounter. We're only talking about this because it introduces Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. But nothing of note happens. I they think some babies get kidnapped. I think it's just the baby kidnapping episode. You're right. The yeah. Vulcan Skull show being heroes and that they save the babies. And, yeah, there was, like, a ten-minute chase of this baby that's just, like, rolling through the park and nobody's been able to stop it. And it's kind of pathetic. Three episodes for a baby kidnapping. Yep. Okay. Whose baby was it? Somebody random. It wasn't yeah. even a main character. Yeah. 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 But it wasn't like the mayor's baby or something? No, it was just some girl's baby. Some baby. Yeah. So then we have another, like, four episodes. Um, this one no, was slightly two. better about not being quite as many fillers, but there's still quite a number of fillers. There's still quite a number of fillers. Um, then we get to the power transfer. We find out that Jason, Zach, and Trini are going to this peace conference summit thing. thing. Yeah. For teens. Who do good deeds or something like that. Yeah. They're being honored and recognized. And so because they're leaving, we need to replace the Power Rangers. And who else? But Rocky, Adam, and Aisha, who did a good deed in the ninja encounter thing. They prove themselves to have a true heart. Yep. And I will admit, as much as we don't like Zordon, this is the one episode where Zor- Zordon wasn't quite an ass. Because he does say that he wants the Rangers to live their own life. They don't have to give up their lives to be a Power Ranger. For the rest of their lives. Yeah. And that That's something he cool. also reiterates in Turbo. Yeah. It's, it was Kimberly also. Yeah. And so if he's not Spoiler quite alert. a bad person with that. Yeah. So Rocky becomes the Red Ranger. Adam becomes the Black Ranger. And Aisha becomes the Yellow Ranger. 
This episode is also important to note because Serpentina is introduced. That's Lord Zed's ultimate weapon that, you know, he never actually he uses. He never uses. It's his own person. sword. It's a snake sword. It's Interestingly enough, the footage that's used to introduce it is the same footage that's used for the red dragon sword also in this season. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> that was one of those... Let's. How can we cut, cut costs? Let's just use the same uh, Sentai footage twice. And oh, you know what's important? It. We forgot to mention what in the mutiny. That is when we get the new Zords. That is when we get the new Zords, isn't it? So basically, the Mastodon turns into the Lion Zord. The Pterodactyl turns into the Firebird. Yeah. Not a Phoenix. A Firebird. The Triceratops somehow becomes a unicorn. And then the saber tooth tiger becomes a griffin. And the Tyrannosaurus becomes the red dragon. Also Serpentera. Yep. Same footage. Same footage. Thank you. Yeah. So, like, in, in the mutiny, yeah, the Zords get destroyed. So they have to go to this planet and get the Sword of Light to... No, the Sword of Light is in the power transfer. Yeah, I about to say, that's in the power transfer episode. Yeah. They get new Zords at the beginning Somehow of the season. Somehow they get new Zords. We're so good at this. <laughs> it's um, been a while since we've seen this episode also. This season also. Yeah. Um, so then we come to Rangers Back in Time, which is, an, it's another two-part filler. Interestingly enough, um, Zed turns back time and the kids, the Power Rangers turn into kids. This really isn't that important, but um, this concept of turning them into kids does come back later on. Yes. Which is kind of interesting, the fact that even though this plot fails, they use it again later on, and it worked later on, which is I find kind of interesting. But moving on, next we have the wedding, where Zed and Rita get married. Rita has escaped from the dumpster mm-hmm. that Zed put her in, um, and she, while well, Zed is going into a um, sleep, He's going into hibernation. Not when, like, the Power Rangers are defeated or anything. Nah. He's just like, I, guys, millennium long nap. Yep. Time for that now. Um, of course, he gets woken up from it um, when Lord Rita, or, Rita, Lord Rita. Um, feeds him a love potion so he won't destroy her. Yep. And they get married. Uh, yeah. 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 Eventually, we figured out that the love potion does wear off. Later but they're on. still married. But they still remain married. Yeah, it's a three-part season. Three-part episode. Mm-hmm. And that's really all that happens is they get married. <coughs> forming a greater threat to the rangers. Yep. I don't know how they're a greater threat. They're slightly greater. they're still incompetent. They are incompetent, but they're slightly greater threat to the rangers. Just just slightly. Mm-hmm. Um. So then we come back to Shocker. The return of the Green Ranger. Dun, dun, dun. So if you can't tell, all the plots revolve around Tommy. Yep. And this is why we made Tommy the dream boat in, in our season list. one. Yep. Let's be fair. Any plot, it's Tommy's in there. Likely. If it's plot that overarchs the entire season, it's probably about Tommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically... Rita and Zed make a clone of Tommy be, with the help of a wizard. Yeah, I think they created a wizard monster, and so... They clone Tommy. And then they send Tommy and the clone back in time. Clone manages to defeat Tommy for Tommy's The clone Lord. is the Green Ranger, so it's kind of this, like, Tommy has to deal with his guilt over being evil. Yeah. Which is something they did in the next season. Mm-hmm. You know, not like... After it happened. Now we waited a year. Yep. Um, so basically, they save the clone from. They. Turn the clone back to. Debrainwash good. him. Yep. And he remains in the 18th century. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of it. And then the season finale is another filler. It's another filler. <laughs> <laughs> this one about. Um, Billy. Billy. Mm hmm. Yeah. So. A few things to note about this season. We did get new putties. They're Lord Zed putties. They're actually easier to beat now because they have a giant Z on their chest. And that you just press it and they go blah, 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 and just get destroyed. Yep. 
Way, way it goes that you made easier to fight monsters. Though apparently, in like the first part, is like they're so much stronger now. Until they figure out, oh, you just have to tap the center. Okay, that works. Learning curve. Yep. Learning curve. Um. So our favorite episode this season, Amanda. What was yours? Mine was Beauty and the Beast. So this is before the wedding, where uh, Goldara goes and kidnaps. Kimberly, because Lord Zed has decided to make her his queen. And I just really love the scene where Kimberly is pretending to be Rita. And she has it down solid. She got it down to a... On, it was on point. It was perfect. It was beautiful. It was, it was hilarious. Yeah. The rest of the Rangers also thought she was evil. It was that, that good. Yeah. When she really wasn't. And it was just beautiful. I really liked that scene a lot. Yeah. Be my favorite, my favorite episode's actually two. Um, before, it's like the two episodes before, um, the season ends, um, Kim, it's the Wild West, West Rangers. Ugh. Did I should tell you all how I feel about this two-parter? Why do you hate everything I love? <laughs> Your favorite episodes are like the cheesiest moments possible. You possibly That's have. what Power Rangers is about. It's cheese. It is. But also, I love cheese. Um, so Kimberly sent back um, to um, Wild Wild West time, essentially. Um, and she's fight, and she. So we have a lot of really interesting things, uh, scenes of her in her cute little shorts and her tied her shirt tied at her midriff, and everyone's looking at her like she's a prostitute. Yep, she's showing her ankles. That prostitute. Uh, she's showing more than those ankles. <laughs> um, yeah. And, um, so the town is being terrorized by, like, a gang of bandits. Mm -hmm. It's not actually a monster. It's just people being bad. I think the later a monster does come. Come. Yeah. And so she, um, sneaks into the command center and grabs the power coin, and Alpha and Zordon are there and are like, what? And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm from the future. Um, I'm a Power Ranger. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so she gets the power coins for the ancestors of every respective Power Ranger except for Tommy. Yep. Um, because they don't have this power coin. Also, he's the white r- lone ranger. The white stranger. The white right stranger. To give the rangers a hand in the past. So he's there anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Highlight of this is the Wild West, West Rangers Power or power suits have like a little bandana and tassels on the arm sleeves they're countryified they're yeah very think iconic texas western movies that's the epitome of this episode and that is why i don't like it because you know i hate those movies i grew up watching them i hate them very much um, i hate you <laughs> Yeah, that's my favorite episode. Thanks for, like, stepping (laughs) on my dreams. I'm sorry. So this season is another, because there were so many fillers, we're not going to do our least favorite, although I think you're going to interpret what my least favorite kind of was. But we really didn't... (laughs) Robin is sticking her tongue out at me. We didn't see all the episodes, so it's kind of hard to say what our least favorite would be out of all the fillers. So we're moving right on to the Dreamboat Awards. So again, keep in mind, we can't use Tommy or Kimberly again. So for the male, we're going with Jason. Because he's nice. He, he's very attractive also. He's yes, another sir. one of the big faces. When you think Power Rangers, you also think Jason. He's the original Red Ranger. Original leader. And yeah. I mean, he was supposed to be the leader until Tommy came in. I was like... Oh, Sixth Ranger? Yeah, I'm the leader now. Yeah, basically. Which is something interesting because in every other season... The Sixth Ranger is the Sixth Ranger. Like, he's not the leader. He is, like, he's there every once in a while when they really need the help. Or he's sometimes the mentor who becomes a ranger. And that is very not often. That's very not often. But, but it's another one of those not the leader. Yeah. Never the leader. It's only when Tommy is the Sixth Ranger that the Sixth Ranger becomes the leader. Yeah. I think Tommy just needs to be in control. Yeah, Tommy has some control issues here. Like being in control. Anyways, so Jason is our dream of, and then for our female award, we have Aisha because she's just adorable. She's adorable. She's such a sweetie. 
Like, oh, how much more that, is it? Yeah. She, yeah. She's just a sweetie. Our top ship, again, is Tommy and Kimberly because you can't beat that. Nope. They were 90s kids OTP. Yep. They're still our OTP, let's be fair. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all we have to say about the first They did not marriage. break up. They, no, they did not. No, they broke up, but they got back together. They got... They... I'm, they didn't get back in canon, but in our hearts, they did. In our hearts, they got back together, they got married, and they had children. And, and we have a lot more Power Rangers. Yep. <laughs> yeah, of course. That, that's obviously what happens. Mm-hmm. And so that's all we have to say about the second season of Power Rangers. Uh, join us next time where we're going to talk about season three of Mighty Morphin. And the um, how many episodes is um, Alien Rangers? I think it was only like 18 or something. It was like 10. Yeah, it wasn't very much. So we'll talk about Alien Rangers along with Season 3. Let's be fair. Uh, Mighty Morphin, the Wikia page, combine the two seasons. They don't distinguish them. Yeah. It just happens to be the last arc of Season 3, typically. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.